Hello everyone, Chris Odegaard, the Prolific Investor here. Today's topic is about, or at least partially about, taxes, uh, about President Trump's taxes. According to the New York Times, President Trump paid $750 in federal income taxes in 2016 and 2017. Now, before I get started on all this, I need to say that this is not a political or partisan video. This is about taxes and financial education. And this video wouldn't be any different if it had been Joe Biden who paid 750 in taxes. So with that out of the way, let's get started. I grabbed some comments from online articles that I believe are typical of how many uh, people feel about this topic. So from the BBC on September 28, 2020, many wealthy Americans use loopholes to reduce the amount of taxes they are legally bound to pay. Next one from CNN on September 29th, 2020. Who pays more in taxes than President Trump? Basically, every American who works hard and plays by the rules. And finally, from Market Watch, Market Watch on September 30th, 2020, we already know we have two tax systems, one for the wealthy and one for the rest of us. So I'm going to address each of these comments separately, but before I do so, I need to clear up some misconceptions about the tax code. According to the Tax Foundation, the actual tax statutes constitute about 2,652 pages. Why so many pages? Why is it so complicated? It's because the government uses the tax code to influence behavior. The government rewards people and businesses who undertake activities that it feels will create jobs or stimulate the economy, and they reward them with tax breaks. If the government thinks owning a home is good for the country and the economy, it gives homeowners a tax break by allowing them to deduct mortgage interest. If the government thinks we should produce our own energy, it gives tax breaks to people and businesses who discover and produce energy. According to Tom Wheelray, uh, CPA, over 95% of the tax code is not intended to raise taxes, but to stimulate the economy. My translation, 95% of the tax code tells you how to pay less taxes by doing the things the government thinks is good for the country and the economy. Now, under these uh, excerpts from the news and, and my commentary on each one. So the first one was that many wealthy Americans use loopholes to reduce the amount of taxes they are legally bound to pay. While that might be true in some cases, you don't need loopholes to reduce taxes when 95% of the tax code is telling you specifically how to reduce taxes. And you don't need to cheat either. Honest and ethical people who reduce their taxes do so legally by utilizing the, in the incentives, not loopholes, set forth by the government. So the next one, who pays more in taxes than President Trump? Basically, every American who works hard and plays by the rules. Not true. President Trump did nothing more than play by as many of the rules as he could. That 95% of the tax code devoted to instructing us all on how to pay less taxes. For those who didn't do that, you chose not to play by the rules, or at least you choose to play by only a few of them and therefore paid more taxes than legally required. And the final uh, item from the news was, we already know we have two tax systems, one for the wealthy and one for the rest of us. Again, not true. We only have one tax system and it's the same for everyone. Some people choose to partner with the government to stimulate the economy, which reduces their taxes, and others choose not to. If I had to stick with the author's words, I would say it like this. There are two task tax systems, one for those who choose to educate themselves about it and those who choose not to. It has nothing to do with wealth. According to the New York Times, President Trump paid $750 in taxes in 2016 and 2017. In 2019, I paid zero federal income taxes. Let's think about that. Me, a regular guy, paid no federal income taxes in 2019. Let's take a look at my situation. I'm not a billionaire. I don't have an army of lawyers and CPAs on retainer. I don't come from a wealthy family. 
I spent most of my adult life as an employee earning a middle class salary. I don't have a postgraduate degree. My undergraduate degree is in aviation technology. The cost to prepare my tax return, my 2019 tax return was $1,750. So how did I do this? I chose to educate myself. I read books, listened to podcasts, attended seminars, and networked with other serious investors who were also interesting and interested in partnering with the government to reduce or eliminate taxes. How much did all this cost me? The podcasts were free. The cost of books was minimal. There were expenses associated with, you know, travel and seminars, but nothing outrageous. One particular networking group costs me $2,364 a year. The biggest expense was my time, the hours spent every week listening to podcasts, reading books, and networking, networking with other investors. In, in the two tax savings examples I cite in blogs number six and number 28, I saved a total of $62,000 in taxes. That seems like a pretty good return on the time I invested learning about the tax code. The truth is, the truth about taxes is not taught in schools, and you certainly won't hear about it in the mainstream media. You will hear the following, however, only the wealthy with armies of attorneys and accountants can pay less taxes, or those who paid less taxes cheated or used loopholes, or there are two tax codes, one for the rich and one for the rest of us. Hopefully by sharing my personal situation, I've dispelled those myths. Most Americans are completely ignorant about this topic, just as I was for most of my adult life. But now you know, 95% of the tax code is telling you how to pay less, less taxes. So what are you gonna do? Your choices are basically two, get educated, partner with the government and pay less taxes, or don't and pay more. But if you choose to pay more taxes, don't complain about those of us who choose to play by the IRS's rules, stimulate the economy, and pay less taxes, whether, whether it be a middle-class average guy like me or the President of the United States. If you, and if you believe it's your patriotic duty to pay more taxes, feel free to do so. For those of you who want to get educated, here are three easy steps. Number one, read Tax-Free Wealth, How to Build Massive Wealth by Permanently Lowering Your Taxes by CPA Tom Wheelwright. Reading Tom's book opened my mind to see taxes in a completely different way, a way I'd never heard before and seldom hear from anyone else. Number two, listen to Tom Wheelwright's Wealth Ability podcast weekly to continue your tax education. And number three, call Anderson Legal Business and Tax Advisors to get an assessment of your tax situation and what can be done to improve it. I currently use Anderson and they have helped me significantly improve my tax situation. You can also uh, call Tom Wheelwright's company, WealthAbility. They can connect you with a, a tax professional in their network. Now, obviously, you can go to any uh, professional of your choosing. I can tell you from experience, however, that most of them don't look at the way taxes that Tom Wheelwright and Anderson Business Advisors do. And as always, when you make better financial decisions, including how much you choose to pay in taxes, someday you can make work a choice instead of a necessity. And finally, I'm going to leave you with a quote from Judge Learned Hand. He was an American judge and judicial philosopher. Anyone may so arrange his affairs so that his taxes shall be as low as possible. He is not bound to choose that pattern which will pay the treasury. There is not even a patriotic duty to increase one's taxes. Catch you next time.